it's been a while since we spoke about the latest trend at workplaces and what better day, day than a Wednesday. Some of you may be struggling to cope with midweek madness. The countdown to the weekend has surely begun. Some of you may be fed up, even thinking of quitting in rage or quiet quitting in rage. Now what's that? What is quiet quitting? It is the latest workplace trend. It does not involve silently resigning or slipping your resignation letter under your boss's door. Quiet quitting is about quitting the idea of going above and beyond your KRA, a key responsibility area at work. This trend is basically about doing only what you're expected to do. If your job is to lead a project, that's all that you do. You don't propose new projects. You don't help others with their projects. You don't mentor colleagues or help team building with team building exercises. All you do is lead your project. They say quiet quitting is about quitting the hustle culture. It advocates signing in at 10, signing out at 5, doing only what you're hired for, and that's it. Do you get the idea? For the longest time, this is what you were told not to do at your workplace. But today, Gen Z is embracing the idea of doing the bare minimum. They have dumped the idea of going the extra mile or working extra hours, taking work calls on weekends or after work hours. Gen Z is quiet quitting. The sort of a workers' revolution on TikTok. It is being endorsed as a revolt against overworking. The trend apparently began in China. Beijing has now banned its mention, quiet quitting. But workers across sectors are talking about it. So how healthy is quiet quitting? In theory, it may sound like the ultimate mantra for a perfect work-life balance. You know, sign in on time, sign out on time, enough time for family, for sleep. And this may sound like the most sustainable way to work. In practice, though, quiet quitting may be just the opposite. This trend stands to take a toll on your life. Now, I, I assume that most of you work because you have bills to pay. Sure, a lot of you love what you do. But you wouldn't work pro bono or for free. Now, what happens to these bills and to your life if you lose your job? Quiet quitting comes with that risk. And hear me out before you dismiss the idea. You see, there's a very thin line between setting healthy boundaries and being disengaged. It is healthy to not bite more work than you can chew. But it is unhealthy to duck at the sight of work. It is healthy to spend time with family, unhealthy to sign out at five even if they're spending work. It is healthy to switch off on weekends, unhealthy to be non-flexible about it. Like I said, it's a thin line. Also, managers can tell when someone has crossed that line. It's easy. You can figure out that someone is not putting the same effort as they used to or when the person's productivity falls. And it stays that way for a long time. Do you know what happens next? Appraisal season. It works on Newton's third law of motion, action-reaction. You get what you give. And work is very transactional that way. If you don't give your best, your employer won't give you the best of opportunities. It leads to stagnation. Your bonus letters will reflect this stagnation. You see, no company wants lackluster workers. You may have noticed how such employees are often sidelined, kept out of strategy meetings, and eventually told to leave. Also, every trend has its good, bad, and ugly. And this is the ugly side of quiet quitting. Experts believe this trend is a result of global burnout. And the theory makes sense. 52% of workers the world over are burnt out. So they're trying to find a way to get back a sense of balance. But is quiet quitting the best way to do it? If you're burnt out, should you too embrace quiet quitting? Why not talk to your manager instead? Figure out a way to cope with the burnout, take a break, come back and deliver your best. But don't let your reputation suffer by becoming the face of a demotivated worker. If you're not satisfied with your work, discuss with your manager. If nothing changes even after the conversation, then quit. Take up another job and give your 100%. But don't become that worker who just does the bare minimum. If you think you need to reevaluate your career, then do that. Upskill yourself. And whatever new it is that you choose to do, be enthusiastic about it. Don't stay in a, in a job half-heartedly. Don't quiet quit. It neither helps your growth nor your reputation as an employee. And that said, you know your situation best. All I'm going to say is, think twice before you jump on a trend. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.